Today I'm going to talk about how to feed your gills correctly in order to obtain both maximal productivity and longevity. The overall herd performance, the first parity sows are of great interest. They, they're quite a proportion of the sows, so if, if something fails at the first parity sows, you can see it on the entire herd results. So we have to have the right flow of gills entering the service unit. We have to have the right amount of gills or proportion of gills in each batch to have even batch sizes. That's good for the entire flow. Looking at rearing of gills, uh, I would like to consider that as a timeline. So in the period from 7 to 30 kilos, they should be fed as normally weaned pigs. No difference is made. Then from 30 to around 65 kilos, they are fed as normally growing pigs. From 65 kilos and until, first, uh, until 110 kilos, we should feed them differently from slaughter pigs because slaughter pigs have a low layer of back fat and we want to increase that in our gilts. From 110 kilos until first service, we, we focus even more of slowing the gain and maximizing the back fat storage. And that's because we want to prepare the gills for the life as a sow. In general, we recommend phase feeding of gills, and that's actually because we want uh, to control the ability of growth uh, using lysine uh, as the limiting factor. Uh, that's a tra traditional way of doing it. So from 30 to around 65 kilos, we recommend using uh, a grower diet or a lactation diet uh, that's sufficient for the growth in that period. Then from 65 kilos and until uh, around 110 kilos, we need to favorite storage of back fat. So we have to decrease the level of lysine and increase the feeding level in order to, to do that. Otherwise, they will be too lean. Then from uh, 110 and until first service or just before first service, we, we actually recommend using a gestation diet uh, in order to favor us storage of back fat. Otherwise, they will grow too fast. Then if it's not possible to use uh, multiple diets in the herd, uh, then you can use a single diet regime uh, from 30 to 110 kilos. But then you have to fit the, the level of lysine uh, to take care of the, the entire interval. So it's actually diff difficult to get the same storage of back fat without uh, increasing growth a little too much. We have a recommended feeding curve for gills. This curve uh, is aiming for a, an average daily gain of 800 grams per day. We know that if gills are growing too fast, we have a risk of locomotor problems and we have a risk of lower longevity afterwards as sows. This recommended feeding curve uh, is actually built for, for this 800 grams per day and reaches its maximum feeding level of 2.8 kilos per day at around day 160 of age. After that period, this feeding curve is a fixed level until flushing before first service. In Seges, we've conducted a trial with Danbred gills. Our main focus was to look at litter size in first parity and looking at the longevity. In that trial, we showed that uh, the weight at first service uh, had major impact on litter size in first parity. 10 kilo of additional weight at first service increased uh, the, the, the number of total born piglets per litter by 0.4. So from that, you might expect that just increasing the weight at first service is positive on litter size. That's true. However, it has negative impact on the longevity. As a farmer, it's interesting to get the sows in, in, into first service with a me medium level of back fat, but also to minimize the weight at first service. So 140 to 160 kilos, that will ensure a good longevity. Looking at the gill flow and, and gill flow in the service unit also, I think it's of great importance because that's a part of the success. So the gills should have the right age around 190 days at least when entering the service unit. They should also have 11 to 12 millimeters of back fat when entering the service unit. If the gills are too young when entering the service unit, the problem is that some of them will have a delayed heat. So actually that can destroy the flow. We should also have in mind that, that feeding to the right back fat at the right age uh, that's something you do before the service unit. And then when they enter the service unit, there is a switch in the environment. Uh, so the presence of boars, uh, new feet, new uh, pen mates on, or something, that actually uh, is positive for getting this, the, these gills into first heat. 
So, looking at our timeline, uh, we are now in the service unit and we are in the area between the first, uh, first heat and the second heat. We actually recommend to, to do first service in second heat in order to increase litter size. So going from first heat to second heat will increase litter size by, by approximately one total born piglet per litter. So this is why this period is of great interest. In Segis, we conducted a trial looking at flushing of gills and the, the effect of flushing on litter size and first priority. We looked at different flushing strategies. In general, we could say that gills that has enough back fat that's like 14 to 15 millimeters or above that at first service, they do not respond positively to a long flushing period. So five to seven days of flushing for gills with an optimal back fat is sufficient. However, looking at the gills with a low back fat level, there is a positive effect of flushing uh, in the period between first and second heat when we do the service in second heat. So they might respond positively by getting 3.4 feet unit in that period, and then uh, the other ones did not respond. Looking at the flow in the service unit, I would like to give you some tips. Because actually the flow is dependent on what happened earlier on the timeline. So if we have some pens where we do not have the optimal flow, we should look back. We should look back at around 100 to 110 kilos. Do we have some very big gills in the pen at that time? We should actually move those forward because that just showed that the litter size was, was determined by the weight at first service. So actually we should move the biggest one forward in order to breed them at a bit younger age to get the good litter size instead of waiting a couple of weeks and then get the negative impact on longevity. Furthermore, we have some small ones in the pens. We should actually not wait for those to disturb the flow in the service unit. We could actually take the small ones out, give them a low lysine diet with a high feeding level. If we do that, we could actually get them to store extra back fat to be able to service them at the same age as the rest of the pen. So this is how you can actually um, control and, and optimize the flow in the service unit in order to obtain both uh, maximum productivity and longevity.